I'm Prelis Andushan. This is Open Mic, and I'm back to the second segment of our program. And this time around, I have Mr. Reno Gajada, who is uh, uh, needs no introduction into St. Lucia. Um, I'm going to get straight to the point because um, uh, my concern is that uh, it remains the economy of St. Lucia and what is happening today. And one of the reasons why I have Reno back a second time because he's an individual that I speak to on a regular basis because. Two of us appear to be on the sort of the same wavelength uh, as to the direction St. Lucia is going and should go. And on that score, um, there are a couple areas I'm sure Reno will not agree with me on, uh, but uh, my, the reasons for bringing, raising those points today is that I've also had the opportunity to speak to several financial experts and accountants, and um, I have highlighted over and over that overtaxation is the, not the way forward for any country. Um, as a matter of fact, only yesterday I was talking to some French officials who had just come back from France. And as we know, France is a very socialist country. And I was shocked to learn that 17,000 businesses go out of business every month. You hear what I say, St. Lucia? 17,000 businesses every month go out of business. And the, the debt in France today is something like 400 billion euros. Now, you know, when, when you reach numbers like that, I don't even want to go into it. I, it's just mind-boggling. Because you should recall that on one of my programs, which was actually repeated recently, the manager of one of the financial institutions was asked the direct question, can these islands, St. Lucia included, ever pay back their debt? The answer was no. The debt will have to be forgiven. Now remember something, St. Lucia, that if at all our debt is ever forgiven, it will never be forgiven if we continue business, doing business the same way. We have to change the modus operandi. We have to change the direction. We have to make ourselves more efficient. Now, I'm not living in a fool's paradise because the OECS is a small region with limited resources, limited skills, and it is difficult to, to compete on what we call the global market. But we must find our niche, like everything else, we must find it. And on that score, I am first, I'm going to first give three of my reasons for all of that. Number one, if I had any say in government, I would reduce the, the VAT to 5%, not 15%. But I would leave out the exempt items. I would make it across the board. The reason for that is, when you have exempt items, it throws a spanner in the works. People don't understand. Various businesses will benefit and other businesses will not benefit. But mainly the ordinary man on the street, he has no way of redeeming the, the VAT. So when you hit him with 15%, his dollar is only worth 85 cents and he is struggling. We, even in the United States, you've been told, small businesses are the ones that really promote the growth. Big businesses are fine. But the small businesses uh, um, are the ones that bring up the growth. Secondly, I would put a freeze on all borrowings, government borrowings, on non-productive assets. I know many people in San Lucia may not want to agree with me, but the thing is this, that when you, gov you have a government building, remember something. Many people who say, well, oh, um, the government should not be paying rent. Nothing comes for free, because when you, b when you put up a building, First of all, there's a cost, and I, the government has to pay interest like everybody else. They don't have the money to build. Secondly, there's a maintenance program, okay? Now, when government put up buildings, they forsake the revenue of um, property tax and income tax. Every business that goes on in San Lucia, the government is, can collect 30% income tax on the, on the revenue and they can collect the property tax. So it is better to let the private sector or different entrepreneurs put up those buildings and the, mon the amount of millions of dollars being spent on various buildings. These money should be taken to run the country. You have our hospitals that are suffering. You have no medication at the hospitals. That is where the money should be going. I remember I was in England 45, 50 years ago and I was told very clearly that governments do not spend money on roads. When you're talking of 8, 10, 15, 20 million dollars, 
You have people like Mr. Renu Gajada, you have the NH Internationals, you have the various companies that come here. What do you do? You want to build a three mile road, you say, okay, fine. You put in a tender, the road is going to cost X million dollars. You let them put it and you organize where they put tolls on the roads for people to organize themselves. But you cannot be taking millions of dollars. We simply can't afford it. The tax base is not wide enough. There are not too many people working. The few of us that pay taxes on, on a regular basis, it's insufficient to keep the government going. I mean, three or four years ago, you, you would collect like $140 million, if I'm not mistaken, in income tax. Today, you're down to 55 and $60 million when everything else is increasing. Now, the, the third thing we have to do, to do is um, we have to reach out to, that when it, we must reach out to entrepreneurs in this country. Entrepreneurs are the ones to drive this institution. You bring the people in, you want to do a building, the better you can bring in the foreign exchange into the country and then take it from there. I have several others to do, but I want to take it stage by stage, and that's why I asked Mr. Gajada to give me his input. All right, thank you, Mr. Shasta, for having me on the show today again. Um, you know, my views always um, are different from you know the normal person views. Correct. In in terms of well, how that's, I see that's what makes life interesting. Right. Um, first of all, let's look at the first one. Hmm. Uh, reduce that um, to five percent. Yeah. Um, one has to um, appreciate. Yeah. That, that the implementation of VAT took 15 years before it was actually implemented. Mm -hmm. So there was a lot of work being done prior to the actual implementation of VAT. Mm -hmm. And there are a number of other things that go hand in hand why VAT had to be implemented. You know, it's, I, I don't think it's in isolation that it was just implemented as VAT, but it was a, a collective agreement with all the other governments why they had to go into VAT and you have, you know, you have the tax regimes, whatever the case may be. Um, one may say that the 15% was extremely high to start off with, especially in the current economic time. During, during the, the, the work being done for the implementation of VAT, you remember our economy was continuing to grow. Correct. We did extremely well till 2007. Mm -hmm. And from 2007 is where we fell off. However, all the work that was done on VAT was done prior to 2007, which had all the indicators right and would have worked out if the economy continued to develop. Correct. Because it was implemented at this stage, yeah. when the economy is a downturn, down. mm -hmm. it is creating a significant depression uh, or additional depression in the economy mm -hmm and affecting a lot more people as the disposable income is not available. Mm -hmm. And I want to be, I want to be um, realistic about it. Sure. Can we just say to the government, mm -hmm. you should just um, take down the VAT amount from 15% to 10% mm -hmm. and you know, can it really happen that way? Uh, it has to go hand in hand with a number of other things, especially with the, 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 the duties mm -hmm. and the taxes that charge on imported goods. So it, it, there was a balance that was struck why 15% VAT mm. and the other duties that came with it. So there's a lot of work that needs to be done. I think a discussion needs to be started off now mm -hmm. on the way forward to address, and how it. To address that. Correct. I so would agree. bringing this up now, mm. I think it is, it's good to bring it up now, but we cannot expect to see it happening over a short-term period. Okay. But I think consistent discussion needs yeah. to be continued yeah. for us to see what we do with that. Because our present situation now, where we stand now, mm. and if we look at our 20-year plan, mm. we would see that VAT is going to affect us mm. for at least 12 years yeah. significantly. Before it can do what before it has it to do. do any yeah. good. So sooner rather than later, I think that needs to be revisited mm. and a different approach taken on to how the VAT is implemented yeah. and put on the ordinary yeah. man. I want like to say, say something to you, Wendell. As a business person, you're a business person, and I'm a business person. And many times we want to go into a business. It looks good to us, but something inside here tells us, hold off. Has that ever happened to you? Uh, it always happens okay, because fine. of the timing and okay, because correct. of everything around you. Now, here's my thing. Both Stevenson King and Kenny Anthony, uh, first of all, they, Kenny, uh, under Stevenson King, they, they, they did a lot of prep, fat preparations, and they said they were going to put it in. But remember, 
when one is in opposition, they say things sometimes they don't really mean. And Kenny Anthony clearly stated that that was the most oppressive tax. He stated that. Are you aware of that? I'm not aware of that. Well, well, well but okay. Let that us assume. Be the case, that would yeah. have been true. Yeah, no, but let, let, the, what I'm saying, it is fact, because it's on tape. He yeah. said it, in fact, recently it has brought up again. Now, it's all well and good because I have no reason to question Dr. Anthony's feelings. He said it would be the most oppressive tax ever. But when he said so, most of the other islands had already implemented that. And I, I don't know whether by coincidence, St. Lucia seemed to have been doing, doing better than all the islands when they didn't have the VAT. Yes. Now, what I'm asking him now is that as a very, very simple question. And I said to Dr. Anthony, look, you want to put in the VAT, okay? I can understand why he wanted to put it in early because if you have a five-year term and you implement it, there's a chance that within five years it will work itself out. But I did say to Dr. Anthony that putting in the VAT now, when the economy was not such a good idea, because it, it, if, you, if you would compare implementing 50% VAT and the economy, it's like a patient who's in the last stage of, say, cancer, and not saying we were that bad, and you want to give them a strong medication to get them out you'll kill them faster. Um, that, I think, has its place. It has been discussed by people better qualified than me, and you'll have come. But everything in life is timing. So that's my response. But right. I like but in, terms of the, in terms of the timing, yes. what we do not now know and have the information on is mm -hmm. whether he had to implement it yes. and what were the implications if he, if he had not implemented Correct. it. Okay. So those are, those are up for discussion Correct. and how we could move forward. Right. But for, um, let's not let's let's dwell on this too much yeah. because um, the there's other areas we could do yeah. now. Yeah. All right, let's look at it. Freeze all borrowings. Um, on the on the construction of government buildings and so on. Non-productive. Right. Yeah. Now, you know, again... And, and also, I would want you to address to that and the question of roads, eh? Yes. Yeah, okay. okay, for the buildings, yes. right? Um, one may say it's non-productive. Yes. But on the other hand, we could also, we could also say... Argue. The savings uh -huh. that are derived uh -huh. from government owning their own buildings uh -huh. can be significant uh -huh. if it yes. is done right. Correct. But right. in your experience, over the last 20, 30 years, would you say governments have been successful landlords? Would you say so? I do not have the exact answers, but what I can say now oh. is, um, up to now, mm. if we look at the Minister of Communications building, mm. when it was built, you know that I think it was paid off this year and it will be handed over soon. So that 15-year term has elapsed. So the commercial communication buildings, yeah. there's no more money to be paid for it. Yeah. And but remember, there's a maintenance fee yeah. and there's Correct. all the other fees. Yeah. It's all it. well and good to say, let me tell you, take your business, take you as an individual. If you decide to put up, call it a building, okay, a building. And, you know, you're taking money from one business and put it into another. Listen to me carefully, and to pay it off. And you pay it off. It doesn't mean that that business was successful because you took money and paid it off. No, it, do, yes. it, no, it doesn't yes. mean it. But so one has to delve further to see and do an, an analysis whether it is worthwhile to put up those buildings, okay? Because remember, in the process of doing that, you are taking funds, because we have limited funds. Productive funds. Productive, that you can yeah. the more productive in areas. Right. You know, you right. have 25% unemployment, okay? I am saying for a long time, and I keep harping on it, but there are other areas. You take, say, a vocational school and you teach people how. You've talked about it yourself. You said in one of my last uh, uh, um, discussions that you have, you pay a man for eight hours and you get one hour's work, okay? Now, that may be a little far-fetched, but anyway, be that what, but I, I'm not going to go there, yes, okay? Right. But what I'm trying to see is it's a, that's a cost to you and me yes. when, when we do that. If, you, if you're able to bring people in, and take those monies, which we, and I won't say we're wasting, but the monies we derive, we divert into those expensive buildings, and put it into human resources, where people like us who are entrepreneurs, uh, or employers as you may call it, not only you and I, but many other people, you'll get a better productive, and who will understand that it's important to do those things, okay? Now, I think I see my people looking at me, but we have to have a break this is the first, sec second segment of our program. We'll be right back.